Chapter 14 Having a Sample You were tiptoeing, yes, literally tiptoeing through the front door of the mansion with eyes on the back door. You never more wish the back property did not have a high fence or the fact you still didn't have a key to the outside gate. You were totally getting a copy of that key before the day was over. It was around seven in the morning, and you did not want anyone catching how you spent all night at Brian's place, especially Blue. Just when you thought escape was in your grasp, the back door only five feet away, a sexy baritone voice filled the air. Well, look who's doing the walk of shame, or should I say, tiptoeing it. You sighed as you turned, seeing Red leaning against a wall, grinning no doubt at the display you put on when trying to sneak to the back door. You had been so focused on it, you didn't even notice him there. He walked up to you, coming within your personal space before you could make a sound. Your cheeks turned red as you heard him take a deep sniff right next to your ear. Yep, still as virgin as a nun's bottom. What the? Oh, God. You nearly leapt away from red, face turning even redder. Could skeletons seriously tell by smell whether you had ever actually... The thought was interrupted from seeing red literally collapse to the floor, howling with laughter as he grabbed his ribs. <laughs> Christ, I can't believe you fell for it. You actually thought I could tell by smell? So, so you can't actually smell whether I, uh, did it? You muttered, desperately needing to know. The thought of Sans, Papyrus, Blue, or any skeleton able to pick up your sex history with a sniff was terrifying. Red finally got himself under control, chuckling as he got up. Nah. But I got news for you. I think anyone who got to know you longer than a week can tell you're a virgin. And I knew you didn't do the dirty deed since you weren't walking funny. Red said, wiping his eyes. You don't know that, you said, crossing your arms. Damn it, now you were starting to wish you went all the way with Brian, if only so you didn't feel the need to die of pure embarrassment now. Hey, now don't get mad. It's a good thing you didn't put out on a first date, Red said, grin still in place as he approached and put both hands on your shoulders. The large, heavy hands squeezed your shoulders gently, his face coming within inches of yours. But if you want some tips before it happens, let me know. Or better yet, we can practice it so you know for sure what you like or don't like. Red said, warm cinnamon breath wafting across your face. What made you shiver was how all teasing and joking disappeared with the words. His tone was totally serious, no joking being done with this proposal. You had ignored this for too long, him being flirty. You not doing anything about the flirting. It wasn't even flirting now, it was him making a serious offer. You could tell from the way his red eyes bored into yours, how his hands kept squeezing your shoulders. You swallowed and took a step back, slowly opening your mouth to ask a question you just couldn't bring yourself to ask before. A question you knew you needed an answer to before this got further out of hand. What about when Tiffany returns? The silence couldn't have been more obvious. You both knew you weren't asking if the proposal was still there if Tiffany returns. You were asking for some insight as to how things were going to be. He didn't look angry, though, or irritated. If you had to put a name to the expression, the way he smiled, you'd say he looked proud. Good for you, kid. About time you made sure to set the record straight. Damn it, and now you were blushing again because the compliment sounded so sincere and felt good to receive. Let me ask you a question, kid. What do you think's gonna happen when she gets back? I think she's going to want everything to go back the way it was, including me not being here. I asked you what would happen, not what the chick wants to happen. There's a good chance both are the same answer, you said, suddenly having trouble looking at him. Red stepped forward into your personal space again, this time 
You had no choice but to look at him. His chin was inches from your eyes. Well, I ain't one for big speeches, so I'll keep this simple. First, the soul bond with the bitch is broken. And second, here's a clue on the chances the said bitch is getting everything she wanted back. Phalanges tapped your chin and gently raised your face up. Sharp teeth gently brushed against your lips as a tongue slipped into your mouth. You didn't even realize it was there until the warm flesh was moving against your tongue affectionately. He was better than Brian. It was the first thought you had, and probably the second thought as well. Brian had been too aggressive and didn't have nearly a tongue this large in your mouth. Red had moved one hand to hold your neck, red glowing tongue slowly and patiently sliding from one end of your mouth to the other. He technically shouldn't have lips, but white flesh came closer, sealing the tongue in an airtight vacuum. That's when you moaned uncontrollably and felt something jerk below the waist. Ahem! The mouth released yours, giving you a chance to take a deep breath, the line of drool connecting your mouth for a second before breaking. Both of you turned to see classic paps at the kitchen entrance, arching an eye with arms crossed. You felt the hand holding your neck let go as you hastily wiped your saliva-covered mouth with a sleeve. Well, that's my signal to exit. Later! Red said with a salute before shortcutting. You stared blankly at the spot Red was at only a second ago, before slowly turning your head back towards classic Paps. Yep, he abandoned you. Sometimes it was just plain not fair for him to be able to do that. Well, I suppose he decided to finally make a move. To be honest, I'm surprised it took him this long. Classic Paps said with a sigh as he approached you. You noticed then he wasn't wearing the shiny armor. Now he was wearing a white shirt with the words bad to the bone with a pair of red shorts and sneakers. But we have more urgent things to discuss besides Red's behavior, such as how you've been gone all night. Classic Pap said in a parental voice with arms still crossed. You gulped, not liking the judgmental look in his eyes. You didn't even understand how his look could come off as judgmental when he had no eyeballs, but it was there. I think we need to discuss the dangers of dating. Luckily, I've done a lot of research on the matter. Why, I used to have only one book on the subject, but now I have a dozen. Classic Pap said with a raised finger. Y you don't say, you muttered, feeling yourself break out into a sweat. Yes, I believe a couple of hours discussing the subject will do you good, reader. Now first, let's discuss the proper protections when humans fornicate. Nope, can't talk about it because I, uh, it's on the list. The list of things includes not talking about, uh, what you want to talk about, like, ever. Reader, I've studied your list of requirements to be employed here, and I'm certain there was no part. I just amended the list. This is me, reader, officially amending the said list to add in a new requirement. No educational lectures on the subject you were just about to lecture me on. Well, I'm not sure it's fair of you to change the requirements this late in your employment, reader. Why didn't you insist on this restriction sooner? Because I didn't think I'd ever have you try to give me the birds and the bees talk. There was a twitch at the corner of Classic Pap's mouth, as if his serious expression was barely under control. Was he messing with you? You couldn't be sure. His poker face was just too good. Well, how about I let you have a new requirement as well, then? You asked, desperate to change the subject. Now he was rubbing his chin, slowly rubbing his chin. Oh yeah, this skeleton was totally messing with you. Very well, reader. My requirement is that all of us at the mansion go on an outing. Have a bonding experience for one day by going somewhere fun. Your shoulders relaxed on hearing the words. Well, at least he wasn't demanding something crazy. I'm actually good with that. Anywhere particular you want to go? How about the beach? Undyne has been trying to get me to go for a while now. It would be good to see her. Classic Pap said with a genuine smile. You returned the smile, nodding. At this point, you probably would have agreed to anything just as long as it got away from the word fornicate. 
Excellent. Let's do it in a week. I'll share the news with the others. Classic Pap said, before lifting you up in a hug. You nearly yelped, but soon returned the hug. Yahoo, cute guy. You listening? Oh, sorry, you said, trying to focus on Brian, who was seated right across from you. It was only a couple of days later, and you were on your second date. A lot had happened between those two days, though. You shared the news of the beach with Sans and Papyrus, quick to note it was a trip Undyne would show up at. There wasn't a need to talk about them going, because it just wasn't happening. Sans and Papyrus both suffered permanent, crippling blows from Undyne. Seeing a different version of her was not going to be a vacation for them in any way. You promised them an outing afterwards, something special for just the three of them. Black told you Scott had turned himself in to the police, and so escorting would no longer be necessary. But you both were still doing the self-defense training, which usually involved you dodging bones. Red hadn't said a word about the kiss, and pretty much acted like nothing happened. And you were too cowardly to bring it up. The idea of romantically being involved with a skeleton was foreign after the mess with Blue. Going out with Brian felt... Safe. Yeah, safe was good. Let's stick with safe. Red finally gave you back your Honda, which felt like it had triple the horsepower now. You were pretty sure his little tweaks to your car weren't so little. Now you were at Grillby's on your second date. Brian had really wanted to come here after hearing your stories about monster drinks. You were going to totally blow this date, though, if you didn't stop daydreaming about recent events. What will it be, gentlemen? Grillby asked as he approached. Brian stared for a second, and you couldn't really blame him. Seeing a fire elemental for the first time was pretty much a shock to any person, even if they knew about monsters. You politely coughed, which jerked Brian out of his state. He blushed before turning to you. How about you order first, reader? I'll have your burger with fries, and also the will-o'-wisp drink you said with a grin. The Will-O-Wisp was the citrus, lime, lemon monster drink you had twice so far. Given the magical balls of light which float and glowed in it, it was a suitable name. You heard Grillby was even going to put it on the permanent menu, a monster drink for humans who wanted something not too extreme. Of course, no cost for it given how you inspired me to come up with it. Your friend here can have one free as well if he'd like. Awesome. Can't wait to taste it. I'll also have a burger and fries. Brian said with a grin, appearing more at ease with the monster made of magical flames. Grillby gave a nod before walking away. Fair warning, your tongue may start glowing afterwards. You said cheekily, getting a snort from Brian. From there, the date went smoothly, small talk flowing with ease. You both received drinks and food, going for the drinks first, of course. You could see Brian's eyes light up as he had a combination of flavors explode in his mouth. Whoa, this is the best. How many drinks do you count on the menu over there? The one hanging on the wall? Oh, I'd say ten, you said as you turned and studied it. A chalkboard naming any drink a human could have the names going from dragon's tongue to bunny hop. You turned back to Brian, who was giving you a wink as he took another swallow of his drink. He made a sound of pleasure as he put the glass down. We definitely need to try drinks like this. Maybe next time we can try one of those others. Um, maybe, you said, nervously shifting in your seat. You weren't crazy about trying some of those monster drinks, the content so strong, the person practically lost control of their senses. Also, there was the fact Grillby would probably charge you for them. You had a feeling the Will-O-Wisp was an exception he'd make free for you. It didn't mean he'd make every monster drink free, and most of those drinks were priced in the hundreds. I can't wait. I bet they're just as awesome. Brian said before taking a final gulp of the Will-O-Wisp. You didn't voice your concerns. It could potentially ruin the date. 
best to wait and just see how things go when you came here again. I swear, kid, you have the worst luck. Groby muttered as he watched the two exit the bar. He liked Raider. He was a good kid with a good soul. He just always seemed to attract the wrong people. First Red, who humiliated him in this very bar. Now the human named Brian, who came here with ill intents. Your date easily distracted you. Your face totally turned when he quickly pulled out an eyedropper and extracted a sample of the Will-O-Wisp. Grillby saw the move, though. Eyes always sharp when it came to unfamiliar customers. The rules of the bar were clear, written right above the menu. All humans had to finish their monster drink here and take nothing with them. It was decided by the royal family a while ago to not share secrets on how monster food and drink were made. But oh, how many humans were stubborn, willing to steal and swipe what they could. Try with their science to identify the secrets of monster food and drink. Normally, he'd walk right over with his fire blazing hot, demanding the eyedropper. But you already suffered a couple of depressing moments at the bar. Make a third one, and you'd probably never step foot here again. So, he let the human get away with his prize. At least, for now. Once he was sure you two had driven off, he pulled a phone out from under the counter. It took only a minute to dial the mansion where the skeleton stayed at. Hey, it's Grillby. I need to share something with you guys. Brian locked the front door behind him after walking into his house. A two-story house, which was probably too big for him, but he liked the space and his job easily let him afford it. Speaking of his job, he was on his way to a promotion with the way things were going. He pulled out the eyedropper, contents flickering with light occasionally. Walking to the kitchen, he quickly pulled a drawer and grabbed a small-capped bottle. Uncapping it, he slowly dripped the contents of the eyedropper in the bottle with a grin. He was looking at his next fay raise. It wasn't as if he didn't like Raider. You were a nice guy and a fun date. Definitely on the inexperienced side, but that didn't bother Brian. He could always get action on the side without you knowing. When you mentioned having monster drinks, though, and further showed you were friends with the monster, Brian couldn't ignore the opportunity. His company produced food supplements, and a supplement based on monster magic would put them ahead of everyone else. He hadn't dared yet say a word to his boss, not sure if his plan even had a hope of happening. Date someone with connections to monsters, get monster drinks, steal occasional samples. The plan sounded shaky at best, but here it was. The fruits of his labor in the palm of his hand. Now he just had to get this stuff to the lab guys ASAP. Still holding the bottle, he hastily pulled out his phone from his pocket, palm sweating as he dialed his boss. The ringtone echoed in Brian's ear until he finally heard a click. Yeah? Hey, it's... Whoa! The phone didn't just slip out of his hand. It felt ripped away from him. He heard a slapping sound behind him, hand clutching for a phone no longer there. The phone beeped as it was turned off, sound coming ten feet behind him. Brian swallowed slowly, turning as his heartbeat picked up. It was the skeleton again, the one he met at the bar. Except this time there were no lights in his sockets, just pitch blackness. There shouldn't be so much blackness in those sockets, the kitchen lights alone should have lit them. It was as if something inside the skull was eating away at the light and the grin below the eyes stretched so wide it looked on the side of crazy. Sorry, but I'm afraid we need to talk, the skeleton said, pocketing the phone. What was his name again? He totally forgot. Wasn't even sure if it was given back at the bar. Wait, why did he give a fuck what his name was? It was in his home, in his home with just the two of them. You're trespassing. Brian said shakily, the words high-pitched with fear. And you're a dirty liar and a thief! The words, which somehow shook Brian's soul, came with a bony hand gesture. Blue light surrounding the bottle in his hand, and it flew to the skeleton. 
He grabbed it midair, taking a second to study the contents. Not that I'm one to talk. I mean, I hurt Reader as well, but golly, you took it a step further. You planned to betray him from the very beginning. The skeleton said as he pocketed the bottle. It was finally hitting Brian. There was a monster in front of him. A monster who was bigger than him and knew magic. Could probably break his neck with a gesture. Look, I'll, I'll just leave him alone, okay? S say it won't work out, Brian said, raising his hands in a peaceful gesture. He thought for a second of grabbing a kitchen knife, then instantly discarded the idea. It was a skeleton, for God's sake. What was he going to stab for? It wasn't like the thing had any vital organs. Oh, have a nice guy break up with him only after two dates? No, no, he's just now getting some confidence. It's important we keep Reader happy, not let him get depressed. The skeleton said, the grin on his face stretching out even more, making Brian shudder. Right, I'm totally good with keeping Reader happy. Uh, what can I do? Brian asked, sweat breaking out on his neck. The skeleton stepped closer until its breath brushed against Brian's face. The smell of mint might have been nice, if not for the sockets filled with blackness, inches from his own eyes. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs>